We officially said goodbye to Curiosity and hopped on a plane to the South Island, which is where we are now. And overall, our mission is to see as much as possible, but Mother Nature isn't making it easy. Flooding, power cuts, slips and road closures all left in the wake, with Kiwis left questioning if this could be our stormiest winter to date. We are on our way from Christchurch to Dunedin. There is a beach we're supposed to stop at along the way, a couple of other things, but the weather's a bit... Dodgy, as they would say. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We're, doing, we're gonna explore no matter what. Just how far we're gonna be able to see will be <laughs> the challenge. Turn left onto our Wells Street. Stopped off in the little town of Omaru, I think I'm saying that right, and it is a Victorian town. You can definitely tell by the buildings. And it is not a nice day outside, but we're gonna go for a walk and check it out to stretch your legs. It's what it is. You gotta go with it. Never too cold for a good swing. It's adult size. Whew. Were you ever into steampunk? No, I don't even know what it is. Are you kidding? No. Oh, I've got to educate you. Yeah. He knows he just doesn't realize it because he's seen it in movies like Sherlock Holmes, The Golden Compass, and Hellboy. Steampunk is neo-Victorian futurism. It's the past reimagined or imaginations gone wild after reading one too many Jules Verne novels. Because what if modern technology existed in the Victorian age? What if steam had become the prime energy source for technology instead of oil and gas? I kind of love this little town. It feels like Harry Potter meets steampunk, which are two things that I love. Probably not dead on, but that's the way it feels. Well, believe it or not, we made it to our next stop, and it's the beach. <laughs> and some famous boulders. We're gonna suit up, run out there. Get our photograph out. and get back in the exactly. car. Exactly. <laughs> Ready? Ooh, yep. As tall as you. Perfectly round, well, not perfectly, but very round boulders. Big balls on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a story that nobody knows how the boulders got here, that it was probably aliens. <laughs> and that's how misinformation spreads. <laughs> this one got separated from the other aliens. It's unhatched. Ooh. This one is here by itself. We walk down the beach cutaways and all the rest of them are over there. It's just so weird. They're all clustered together. Where do they come from? What does it mean? <laughs> Life questions. That's how the aliens came to the... Oh my gosh, that's how the aliens were born! Ah! Oh. <laughs> Male interpretive art. <laughs> that includes the boulder balls. So last week I talked about how we're in this weird transitional phase of life I call limbo, where one chapter has ended 
but it's going to be months before the next one begins which means we are more untethered than we have ever been before and it's thrilling but as someone who's also had a fair amount of trauma in my life it's very easy for my monkey mind to take over and the reality is it just takes a lot of work to take things in stride and pretending that it's a cakewalk just felt like a disservice to all of us. So I thought it was important to acknowledge the feeling of limbo because many can relate, but wow, your responses. There were so many people sharing their transitions, words of wisdom and support. So thank you. Your comments are often a reminder that humanity is alive and well, and we are a couple of lucky ducks to have such a supportive, online community. And speaking of virtual support, I am very excited to say that BetterHelp is today's sponsor because I have been using BetterHelp for almost a year now. If you think you might be feeling depressed, stressed, anxious, or overwhelmed, like I feel sometimes, then BetterHelp has a network of licensed therapists with a broad range of expertise that can provide access to help that might not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire that helps assess your specific needs, and then they match you with a therapist within 48 hours. Then you can talk to your therapist in a private online environment through secure video or phone calls, and you get unlimited messages. Plus, everything you share is completely confidential. And one feature I really like is that you can request a new therapist at any time for no additional cost, because I changed twice in the beginning, but third time was a charm. And now I really like my therapist because she has a lot of experience in childhood trauma and she's done a lot of work abroad. So we connect on many different levels. So join 3 million plus people who've taken charge of their mental health and get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash gone with the winds. That's better H E L P.com slash gone with the winds. Don't worry. You don't have to remember. I will put a link in the description box below. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, this is the steepest street in the entire world. It is a 35% incline, and I've been told that your heart rate will be at at least 135 by the time you reach the top. So I'm at 90 right now at the bottom of the hill. Let's see where we are at the top. Race ya? <laughs> Oh, you think it'll go, oh, that didn't last very Oh, no, he's still going. All right, well, I know what happens. Are you really gonna run the whole way? Climbing up this unusually steep street with its more than a little askew homes feels like something we would find in a Dr. Seuss book. But Baldwin Street was anything but intentional. It was a city planning error. Like much of the city of Dunedin, the streets were laid out in the mid 19th century in a grid pattern by planners in London with little to no consideration for the terrain because they had no information about the topography. But hey, at least the residents of Baldwin Street will never have to worry about floods. Oh, what's the path? Easier forwards and backwards.
140. <laughs> now you're standing here and it's still going up. <laughs> There you go, 145. This really brings a literal meaning to the phrase nice. slippery slope. Because while I'm sure there are many challenges to building on such a steep incline, one that may have already caught your eye is the street itself. It's made of concrete, not asphalt, and apparently for safety reasons, because in summers it would melt and slide right off, and in winter it would get too slippery. I don't know if it's quite steep enough to pull this shot off. Oh, but it's pretty steep. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, it's just too much. I got a little excited. <laughs> just all right, scratch that. <laughs> Boop. So there you go. Welcome to Dead Eagle. We just blew two hours there on a hill. It's crazy. So many upsides to visiting a place in the off season and so many downsides, like some of the main attractions being under construction. Go! Very, very quiet. I'm hunting weapons. You have to be very, very quiet. I'm not a <laughs> Steep, the theme of the day. I keep on waiting for the hurricane to come and watch the magic that you brought. Of the log. This looks like a dark blob. We can't get any closer because we have to stay 20 meters away. There's a couple penguins in the surf over there. Oh, they're getting out. We have to stay far away. Oh my god, can you see them? I can totally see them. Oh ah! my god, they're so cute. I know we're geeking out here, but it's a worthy occasion because unlike other penguins, yellow-eyes don't live in colonies. Oh my gosh. They form long-term relationships and are very private, almost recluse, and come and go only at dusk and dawn. That is, as long as they don't spot us or any other creature near their path. Oh, this makes you want a different camera so bad. I know, I wish I had a long lens because they will go to extraordinary efforts to find a secluded nest and will commute up to a kilometer over steep terrain just to make certain they don't have any neighbors. Oh my goodness, what a trick! But once they've found that perfect isolated patch of coastal bush to call home, they will return every night of their lives. Well, what do you think? It might not look like much on this little camera and the super wide camera that Nikki has, but that was pretty special to see them jumping over the rocks and swimming in in the surf. And man, you just have to be here. Sorry, just <laughs> gotta be here. Perfect, perfect way to end a day. Yellow-eyed penguins are the rarest penguin in the world and there are only like 200 pairs left in existence. So it's kind of a big deal. And that, is penguin tracks. Oh, look at their big feet. I didn't think we'd see them, they're so rare. And they said this time of year, they're just now starting the nesting, but most people just come and they don't see anything. That's what we were told, so super lucky. Ah, worth the cold.